Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique spaces. Today we're traveling to Alaska to take a tour of John and Stephanie's airplane house. So fasten your seatbelts and prepare for takeoff. Their property features a flight school and you can actually book this airplane house to stay in overnight and it features one-of-a-kind amenities such as a deck on the wing, the original cockpit with a flight simulator, and a functioning cargo door allowing for you to bring in your oversized luggage. And on this tour, I think you'll see that the sky is really the limit when it comes to building a unique home. But before we board this aircraft, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. Hi, my name is John, and this is my girlfriend, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we'd like to welcome you aboard the DC-6 at the Flight Mike Alpha Pilot Lodge. So the idea of getting an aircraft and turning it into a tiny home began, well, sort of by accident. Stephanie and I were looking at ways to run a flight school here in Alaska how we would be able to house students nearby. And we decided on this property, which is a little over 100 acres, to build our own runways, build our own hangars, and build tiny houses, small cabins, for students to come stay with us and train. In that process of construction, I said, wow, what if I could buy an already dried in building, like an aircraft, and turn it into a house. I wouldn't have to buy the two by fours. I wouldn't have to buy paint for the outside. I wouldn't have to buy siding. I wouldn't have to put on a roof. And this will be cheaper in the end. It wasn't at all. We're not at the end yet. All of that morphed into how can we create the most unique, amazing experience for our students and for our guests who are going to come stay with us and do flight tours or flight training here on site. Right now in the background here, we have a Boeing 727 that was a freighter for FedEx for many years. And then on this side, we have a freighter that's a DC-9. Both were decommissioned, and then we purchased them and decided to turn them into housing. To move a load like this, it requires some serious equipment, serious permitting, lots of pilot cars. Cost-wise, what do these airplanes actually cost? You're basically buying them for scrap metal. So in the sub $100,000 range, is gonna be pretty common to buy the hull of an airplane. It's gonna be pretty common to spend up to $100,000, if not more, getting it on site where you need it to go. The transportation far outweighs the cost of the aircraft. As far as the next cost of getting contractors, getting materials, all of that into here, I have no idea to the penny or really even close what we have into this so far to have it complete, but I would say just if I was to pick out a number to duplicate this, would be well over half a million dollars. I wouldn't be surprised by the time it's all said and done and we have the driveway put in, all of our landscaping done, all of the nice bedding and all the nice furnishings all complete and in here and we tally all that up if we're pushing into the six to $800,000 range per aircraft. So this is the no section of the DC-6. To get this thing fully supported and make sure it wasn't going to be shifting around on us, we drove these seven inch piles down 20 feet down into the ground below grade, and then they stick up anywhere from four to seven feet above grade. Now, once we had the pipes in the ground, we had to get the airplane on top of the pipes. We brought in a lot of excess fill dirt, smoothed that area, that made the pipes just barely stick out above the ground. We wheeled the airplane back over top of the pipes and then slowly dug away the dirt from the tires until that airplane settled on down, all the way down onto the pipes that were already preset to a certain height and that helped us get the airplane perfectly level. To ensure that this thing is not going to fly anymore, we welded and bolted the airplane to these pipes. We did not want it to feel like you were inside of a trailer or inside of an RV moving around inside there. 
want to make sure we had a nice firm connection with the ground and that during an earthquake event or any sort of 100 mile an hour wind, which happens about once a year out here, uh, that the airplane would be firm attached to the ground. We have four other seven inch piles driven into the ground, supporting a lot of the weight there in the center, as well as two smaller four and a half inch piles, also driven 20 feet down that are catching our wing supports. That whole system allows us to secure the airplane to the ground, and now at this point, we don't worry about the suspension collapsing or the tires going flat, because even if that happened, it would not cause the airplane to go out of level being supported by these big pipes. Now, as we get to the back of the airplane here, we have our mudroom up top and we figured, hey, we've got all this space below the mudroom. Rather than wasting interior space of the aircraft, we wanted to go ahead and utilize this space down here for all of our dry goods. This is a decent size structure. It is about 700 square feet of interior living space. That brings us back to the very aft part of the airplane. We have a mechanical room inside the tail cone of the airplane that houses our boiler, our domestic hot water heater, our pressure tank for our well, as well as the main circuit breaker electrical panel box. I think from a pretty early age, both of us were interested in aviation, looking up at the sky when airplanes would fly over. I never thought um, women were pilots, really, because you never saw them flying the big airplanes that I was used to. But when I came to Alaska about 15 years ago, I started seeing that there were a lot of women pilots, and I thought maybe I could do this one day. And the opportunity came up, um, and I went for it. So my background in flying started about 12 years ago doing my flight training up in Michigan, and then eventually moving to Florida, opening a flight school there and running that for several years. I came here for just a few days, flew around with Stephanie and her airplane, saw bears, saw glaciers, landed on beaches, had an amazing time and never went back to work. So we are up here in the cockpit of the DC-6. We have most of everything original still here. We do have a few more things to add back, some of the original instrumentation, and we do have all the original flight controls. So you've got your yoke and pedals and your throttles here, uh, same throttles that they were using to fly the airplane. What we'll do is actually connect all of this stuff to Microsoft Flight Simulator so you can sit up in the airplane and actually fly the airplane. Everything got spray foamed to ensure that there's good adequate insulation. Condensation is probably the biggest concern that we have in here being that you're inside of an aluminum beer can and you're going to be in here cooking, showering, doing all that stuff in the winter when it's negative 10, negative 20 outside and 70 degrees inside of here. Some of the other features up here in the cockpit are the cockpit coffee station, complete with a little beer fridge underneath there. All the old circuit breakers, wiring, miles and miles of wiring that were in this airplane. Some of it had to come out just for insulation purposes and replacing it with our own wiring to run the, all the domestic lights and everything. But uh, we did try to leave as much as we could so you could see what went into actually making this thing fly. There's a lot more than just engines, propellers, and wings on it. There's so much in the way of technology but keep in mind, this technology is from the 40s and 50s. Pretty impressive what they were able to do nearly 70 years ago to make all of this possible and make this airplane fly for the better part of six decades. Moving from the cockpit into the living area, first cool thing to talk about is this cargo door. This is the original cargo door for the airplane and still works. So press up, it goes up. And you've got uh, all the space you need. If you're a, kind of one of those not so light travelers, packing a little heavy, bring in all your oversized luggage, no additional baggage charges. You can load it all right through there, through the cargo door, and, and down it goes. So our cargo door there, fully insulated, all spray foamed, and we've got this nice shiplap covering all that. We've got our massage chair. We've got a original tire off of a 727. One of our other projects that we're going to begin working on here soon, our 727 airplane house. That's one of the tires off of it. Makes a nice little coffee table. 
And then if you've got extra friends, uh, no additional charges for the extra boarding passes. We've got a sleeper sofa to sleep two extra folks. So the entire airplane does sleep six. Then we get from our living area into our dining area. We have seating for six. Uh, moving from the dining area into the kitchen, you've got pretty much a full-size kitchen. Regular size refrigerator, freezer, electric hot plates for cooking inside. Pretty straightforward, but at the same time, we wanted to keep everything household. So regular size cabinets, regular size sink, from the kitchen, you do have a nice view looking out at the wing deck. And if the weather's nice, go ahead and hop out on the wing deck. Enjoy the sunshine. So out here on the wing deck, we've got some nice outdoor seating for you guys. A little umbrella to put up if it does get a little rainy. Outdoor grill for your cooking pleasure. And of course, every wing deck on an airplane house needs a bathtub. Can't be a wing deck without a bathtub. Pretty happy with how the wing deck came out. It was a massive challenge trying to build a flat deck, a flat surface on a cambered, curved, angled wing surface. And there's really not a whole lot of structure to screw to and attach a deck to in that wing. So we went back and forth on, should we just keep the wing original and put some traction tape down or put down some bed liner or something to give you some grip to walk around. But we figured, hey, you don't want to be spilling your drinks and having your beer sliding off the table on an angle. We figured, hey, a level deck is probably the best. Came out pretty good. And uh, now it's just a matter of time to see if the Trex will outlast the rest of the airplane or what's going to last longer. So coming down the hallway here, we've got our thermostat on the wall to keep the in-floor heat nice and warm, keep your toes nice and toasty warm. We've got our uh, first bedroom here. This is sort of the guest bedroom. It's a little bit smaller, pretty simple. You don't see any windows in the bedroom, but that's actually a plus here in Alaska. And the reason is, well, it's light a lot in the summertime. Coming through the hallway here, lets you out into the main entryway. This is the mud room. And this is where you first enter into the aircraft. That is not a propeller from this airplane. That is a propeller off of a Cessna. The propellers that were on this airplane were about 12 feet wide, so they would not quite fit inside this space. You do have your full-size washer dryer, and this is one of the cargo doors. This is actually where much of the cargo was loaded through the rear of the aircraft that is now inside the structure. And we built this mudroom structure sort of around the airplane. Everything was scribed and matched to the plane. So each piece of shiplap, lovingly scribed and cut and trimmed to match that curve to seal it up and create this building that is really attached to the airplane giving us a little bit more space and a way to have this cargo door opened up so you can see what it really looked like when it was a flying airplane next thing we have right here is our bathroom so you've got your 36 inch vanity in here your heated towel bar because towels need to be warm too and then you have an HRV system that exhausts all the air from the bathroom, passes it through the HRV to recover some of that heat, and then brings in cool, fresh air and dumps that off into the cockpit to get good airflow circulation through the whole airplane. We also have a nice tiled shower here and regular flush toilet. Uh, you may notice that if you use the toilet a whole lot, it gets nice and toasty warm. We did plumb this with uh, domestic hot water rather than cold water. It is about 38 degrees when it comes out of the ground. So that can make for a lot of condensation. And so to overcome that issue, we just decided, hey, we'll go straight to the hot water heater. And it it's kind of a win-win. So not sure why everyone doesn't do that. And then right behind this door is our master bedroom. So the master bedroom is complete with a king size bed. That is the back pressure bulkhead. Then that little piece of plywood there lets you back into the mechanical room where you have the boiler, the circuit breaker box, uh, the HRV, pressure tank, hot water heater, all of that good stuff. Now, who can stay here and who we really built this for is truly everyone. Obviously, the first priority was our flight training students who are coming here to further their, their training and their skills as pilots. Also, for people who are coming to the area as tourists, 
and want to have a unique experience, stay here and then have an airplane and pilot dedicated to them to fly them around Alaska and cater to them for a very true unique Alaskan experience. And when we're not busy with our flight students and our tours, we'll be filling the nights in here through Airbnb. So anyone on Airbnb can book these aircraft and stay on site with us, whether it be our tiny homes or staying inside the airplane. I hope even if folks are not aviation savvy or enthusiasts, that they can look at this and realize that this was built in 1956. This flew around the world. This has made trips across several continents. And as you walk through here, hopefully you appreciate the history that you're sitting inside of. Sometimes we even meet pilots that have told us, oh, I flew that airplane, or I remember that plane, or, you know, worked on it. And we tell them you can come sleep in it now. They're like, oh, I slept in there before. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't comfortable yeah. back then. Now it's more comfortable <laughs> to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check back soon because we publish a new unique home tour every single week.